weeks, we have heard how change, change intended to bring us together as one, is not something that can be forced upon us. It must come from within us. Don't get me wrong. External pressures can be effective to a point. But something in today's gospel reminds us that such change is not lasting. Now in his letter to the Romans, Paul has been emphasizing how the Holy Spirit helps us to see that the law was never intended to be a weapon yielded to demand compliance as it had been interpreted, but instead was intended as a guide to what right relationship with God and one another looks like. His point was that compliance with the law did not make one righteous with the Lord. Righteousness, Paul says, is not earned. It is only known through relationship with God and one another in Christ. He goes on to say that what enables this relationship is not the law, but grace. Grace given out of love. Love that is shared in and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is why for Paul to deny the Spirit is to deny Christ. To deny Jesus is to deny God. To then deny God is to deny ourselves. Because we are all made in the image of God. All, he says, Jew and Gentile, master and slave, male and female, we are all made in the image of God. Therefore, to love one another is to love God. Not because we are somehow divine, <coughs> but because the divine that rests in each of us is the source of love we share when we are in relationship. Right relationship for Paul means that we treat each other with respect, that we do not seek to do one another harm. This does not mean we turn a blind eye to another's failings, but nor are we to judge. Being in relationship means we are to help one another overcome the struggles that are faced so that our relationships are not broken but maintained. If we are to succeed in helping one another, Paul says the ways in which we do must be grounded in grace. Grace whose source is love. God's love, revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ, and made known to us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. Love that has the power to help us overcome anything. still something we need to hear and embrace. Just think, if we did, what changes might we be able to make? What would our community look like if we truly interacted with one another out of love, extending grace? Even in those times we don't believe they are warranted. 
You see, grace is what enables us to forgive one another and to know forgiveness. And forgiveness makes it possible for us to be reconciled with one another. And reconciliation is what restores relationship and makes it right. In today's Gospel reading, <clears throat> Jesus uses a story about soil to describe the rule of grace and the difference love makes in relationships. He begins his story telling those present that God's grace and love is for everyone. Just as there are different types of soil, there are different types of people. And if the seed is a metaphor for God's love, we see that God does not discriminate. It is offered equally to all. Yet in his story, we see there are some who are not willing to accept it. Sadly, a pathway walked upon time and time again will be like those who are unable to recognize what is being offered, rejecting it as irrelevant in their life experience or out of a mistrust for the benevolence of others. This is why it can take generations for injustices of the past to be overcome. While it is hard to break through those shells we create to protect ourselves out of fear or just sheer defiance, Jesus says it is possible. Love has the power to do so. And when it does, it begins to change here, inside of us. But love that does not share in the grace it offers, soon withers and dies. Because grace is what makes love known. Without experiencing grace, Love professed is just another word. This is why Jesus will say in chapter 25 of Matthew's account that love which does not offer grace is not real love. For Jesus, grace is the product of love. It is the outward manifestation of what is happening on the inside. If nothing is happening on the outside, then very little is possible to be happening on the in. For this reason, in his letter to Timothy, Paul says that love without works is dead. Like Jesus, he sees that how we treat one another is directly relatable to the love we profess to know. Good news is that the change love makes in us can be incremental. Maybe it doesn't take root this time. But with each encounter, it slowly transforms us. And if we are willing, we will one day be able to know and share in the grace that it offers. But Jesus warns, just as all are not willing, not all want to see us succeed. He knows that there are some who are not willing to let go of what they value more than God's love. That there are some who will not let go of the past. And some who will not let us do so either. Until they can and do, love is not able to thrive. Instead, anger and hatred and self-importance prevent grace from being known. All this sounds pretty disheartening. 
Yet if we go back to the beginning of Jesus' story, we see that hope lies in God's willingness to keep trying. <clears throat> God's desire that all might know his love and share in its grace. Yet because we are a stubborn lot, God understands that change can take time. God also knows that even the hardest soil, given the right nutrients, will over time become good soil. And that weeds will be something we struggle with always. It is only through the grace that God's love affords we are able to then hold those weeds at bay and are empowered to bring forth a fruitful harvest. This is that same grace Paul says we are able to know and experience through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Who, like the seeds in Jesus' story, is poured out on all without discrimination, so that all might know and share in the forgiveness and reconciliation it reveals. Forgiveness and reconciliation that makes possible our right relationship with God and one another.